you make the most out of the things that you actually put your time in instead of spreading yourself too thin. Anything else? Okay, I can. So I've already been through like three years of college and I had a pretty rough start um, freshman year. So I guess my advice would be you should definitely prepare yourself. Um, I started off fall quarter freshman year expecting it to be like high school. So that transition is pretty hard. But once you realize like, okay, this is different. I need to create a study plan. I think you guys will be set. Like I failed my first exam of college and I was so stressed out. I went to the animal shelter and I adopted a cat. So be sure you have a stress, stress relieving mechanism and also a study plan. Yeah, yeah. The transition to college can be pretty stressful. Um, that's actually one of the questions I wanted to ask you. Um, and maybe we can hear from one of you that's a transfer. I think Hannah may be the only one. Um, like, what was that transition like coming to Davis from from community college? Yeah, so I would say in my situation, there was a lot of um, logistical stress. In addition, that was kind of layered on to the obvious stress of changing environments, changing schools. I, I had this wonky mix of credits and maybe some of you transfer students might my uh, degree or like have a similar situation where you have kind of like this different set of like, you know, you're used to your community college system where you have like, you're used to their online systems and now you're getting used to a whole new system and you're trying to understand how this new school works. Plus you're in a whole new environment. Um, fortunately, I had attended a four year university that was on a quarter system um, my first year of school. So but I do recognize how difficult that transition from a semester system to quarter system is. And um, you're, when you're on the semester system, you have so much time to get assignments done. And the pace is just, for me, it was a much, much more like you were able to consume the information and digest it. Whereas the quarter system, you it really is thrown at you really quickly. And every week is something new. Every, every lecture is something new and it can, it can get overwhelming. So as hard as it might be to keep up with the readings, the lecture material, the homework and the quizzes and exams for each class to, I think the best way to adapt to the course system coming from maybe a semester system uh, at a community college is to at least keep up with your lecture materials and make sure that you're getting that lecture um material down before you know don't overwhelm yourself with getting everything done for that one lecture and then you know you're disregarding all of your other classes or something you want to at least get the exposure to the material and then you can focus on like the the readings and the other things that kind of complement that material but at least stay on top of it each week thanks hannah um and then I did want to emphasize what Anna said earlier um, about, you know, if you do encounter failures in your first quarter or your first year, um, to not not let it get you down and not let it discourage you from keeping um, keeping it up. Anna's a third year now, even though she failed that first uh, exam for college, she got um, some support from some pets. And that's really important too for college, having that support system, whether that's a pet, um, social support or anything like that. So keep that in mind um, as you go through fall quarter, like Raf said, don't overwhelm yourself, leave space for, for that support that you need and that time to relax and hang out with your pet <laughs> or hang out by yourself with books if you were an introvert like me. Um, we do have a question uh, that just came in, um, and all of you can share if you all want to. Um, 
what are your plans for after graduation, like career plans? I guess I can go first uh, since I'm a fresh graduate. Um, so right now I'm currently just taking time off to study for the MCAT. Um, I'm planning to take it in January. Um, after that, um, I'll probably be on the search for a full-time job, um, at least for the time that I'll be um, applying for medical school. And then hopefully um, if all goes well, then I hope to matriculate um, the start of uh, fall 2022. Okay, I can go next since I'm planning to graduate in the spring. Um, so depending on the whole situation um, and how hard it may be to find a job, I may just apply to get my master's in public health. And if not, I think I want to go into the biotech industry and I don't know, maybe apply to like Genentech or some of those companies. Um, I'm also going to be graduating in the spring and right now I'm applying to um, master's of public health programs. I'm still not 100% sure if I'm going to, I'm just going to apply and see what happens and what my opportunities come back to me as um, and then reassess. But I also kind of want to get into um, jobs that focus on women and child nutrition and care, um, maybe nonprofit government work, something of the sorts. Hannah, I'm going to ask you a follow up question just really quickly, um, just because I know that you've changed your mind about your career path. How did you get to this final career path that you're on right now? Oh my gosh, I have been a whole roller coaster. Like I was originally pre-med. I That is still something that I have in mind, but I realized that I need to stop rushing myself. I don't have to go to med school right away. I want to explore my options first. And I think taking on different jobs and seeing which field I like more because there's so many different things I can do with my major. Like right now I'm in an independent study for health economics. So we'll see how that goes. But um, I was pre-med, I have all the classes for it. And I just realized that I need a break from hardcore um, schooling. So if I do go back to school, I'm going to take a slow, I'm going to pick up my master's first and then we'll see about grad school and then finally med school. But yeah, it's okay to slow your roll and take it easy, like figure out what you want to do. I changed my mind so many times. I was like, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to do research. I'm going to like join the government. And I still am able to do all of that if I wanted to. We're all young. <laughs> we have time. Does anyone else want to share? if anyone has something, a different path that they're on? Um, I'm not sure what I'll do like directly after graduation, but I want to go to grad school for at least a master's in epidemiology. So I'll probably um, apply and see if I get in anywhere like right out of grad or undergrad. But if not, I'll just try to find a job in public health maybe and then just keep applying until I get in somewhere. Cool. Um, I will add um, that there's been GDB students that have gone all sorts of different directions. Uh, there's GDB students that end up in, in like plant pathology, plant health, they end up in environmental health, they end up in um, infectious disease like control in the government, they end up in public health um, programs for different diseases, whether infectious or chronic. There's uh, GDB students that go on to law school. There's plenty of GDB students who go to med school, PA school, nursing school. Um, there's a ton that have been going into public health. So there is 
a lot, a lot of options. So if you have any follow-up questions to any any of the career things, um, let us know in the chat. There's also a ton of resources on our website about what you can do with a GDB major. You can do a lot. You can do pretty much anything you want. Um, I will ask, uh, there's another question. How do you, so this is about the practicum. Um, and maybe I should give a little bit of a background for those of you that don't, maybe don't remember what the practicum is. The practicum is a, basically a senior project that every GDB student completes uh, in their senior year usually. Um, it's a research project, so they go through the research process with a mentor, and that mentor is typically a UC Davis faculty member. Um, so all of our students do it. It seems intimidating sometimes to students when they're coming into the major, but every single GDB student that has ever graduated has completed this, so it's completely doable in a research university. Um, so the question is, how do you approach professors about practicums and how do you figure out what you want to do your practicum on? So maybe two or three of you can share about finding a practicum. I don't know if all of you have practicums yet. I have one. I guess Go for I it, Hannah. Um, so I would totally recommend checking out our FIAC that we're going to be off offering this uh, fall. And um, it's going to be offered on two Thursdays from 12.10 to, to 1 p.m. There's the shirt. <laughs> um, if you have any questions about that, please like type in the chat right now and we'll like tell you where to go to register for that. But I joined that my fall quarter. So this is my first quarter at Davis. And like in that FIAC, they, the peer advisors and academic advisor at the time, walk you through like how to email a professor how to narrow down your interests, like what, what buttons to push on the computer to find a professor that matches up with your research interests and how to email them to set up uh, an interview and then how to like hone in on your interview skills once you do get an interview. And then basically once you're in their door and you start talking about it, you, you mention the prospect of being a them being a practicum mentor and it, it kind of just falls into place if that's where, you, if they have a spot for you and you're willing to put that your effort out there to them. Um, my one advice would be just to start early. A piece of advice would be to start early. Um, and yeah, looking on faculty uh, department websites, their faculty lists, and you can click on their name and it'll show all of their like research interests, what they've done in the past, um, the papers they published and then basically from there you can visit their lab website to see if they have any openings or just outright email the the professor um, if you're interested in their research and want to be a part of their team but you also can wait until gdb 187 to get more exposure to that um, how to do all of that too can you all um, are you all surprised to know that Hannah is facilitating FIAC? I'm very surprised. Like, it's not like she did another shameless plug in there or anything. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'll be there. <laughs> I, I just want to add in that I took the FIAC last year, um, and it was like, I mean, I, you may, I, may, I, may, I may sound dramatic, but I thought it was really amazing. Like, I was so, um, I was really excited to get into research, and I just, like, oh my God, there's so many cool research professors here at Davis. And then um, but I wasn't sure how I should approach them. Like, should I go to their office? Should I like send them like a pigeon? Like, I don't know what I didn't know I did do, but FIAC really like helped me make my email, uh, make sure it like was professional, helped me set up my resume too. And that actually helped um, for a lot of, uh, even past finding research, um, finding job opportunities or you know, internships. The FIAC really helped out with everything actually, so. It's kind of, I feel like it's kind of an all-in-one primer for uh, applying to things and et cetera, et cetera. We have so many follow-up questions to FIAC. I'm so excited. Um, okay, so FIAC versus first-year seminar. 
FIAC is it does not give you units. It's a it's a smaller group of students that meet for a specific topic. Um, the first year seminars, so the FRS uh, that maybe you put on the chat, the FRS actually gives you units um, and it's listed under a different program um, at UC Davis. So FRS you register for on Schedule Builder. For FIAC you register on a separate link. And I put that on the chat if anybody would like to register and has not registered yet. And another question is, can you sign up for FIAC during winter or spring? This year, the only guarantee is that we're offering it in the fall. I don't know if we're offering it in the spring, unfortunately. Do you just attend the FIAC Zoom sessions or are there assignments? Um, there are optional assignments, but like I said, this isn't for a unit, so it's not graded. So it's not like you're forced to do the homework assignments. We're not going to check on you doing the assignments. Um, it's mostly just um, exercises to help you through the process of finding a topic that you're interested in, finding a lab that you're interested in applying for, and, and drafting up those emails that, that like Michael was talking about. So there are assignments, but they're not like, like mandatory assignments. Cool. I hope you all join. I love FIAC. I don't know if you can tell. Um, Nikita, yes, um, you can take it as a second year. Um, although, yeah, you can take it as a second year. Um, but like Hannah said, there is a class that you'll take your third year um, that is kind of similar to FIAC. So it's up to you. Um, the sooner you take FIAC or, or the GDB 187, the earlier you have that help to find a research project. So um, yeah, you can take it then. Um, just let the advising office know next year that you want to join that class. Cool. Um, another question is, what was the toughest GDB class you've taken and what are your tips for succeeding in it? Okay, this is um, like you can choose which OCHEM you want to take. You can take the eight series or the 118 series. But in my opinion, organic chemistry was the toughest class that I ever had to take. And my tips for that is to write down all of the mechanisms and the reactions until you have it memorized. But you guys don't have to worry about taking OCHEM for probably another year or two. But yeah, um, I think my tips for just classes in general, I am super biased, but I love taking digital notes. I love pen and paper, but having my notes all on my computer is so convenient. And I have notes from my classes in freshman year. So you will always have access to them and it's neat and really easy for you to look for information from whatever class. Yeah, adding on to note taking, um, if you haven't already, you should download Microsoft uh, OneNote. Um, it's a pretty good tool. Uh, the reason why, like most of our students use it is um, you can upload like the PDF of the lecture onto it and then you can write all over it, whether you have an iPad or a computer. Um, I prefer using the computer just because like I can type faster than I can write. Um, so that's helped me a lot. Um, uh, yeah, I have this similar um situation with like ochem too like it's never been my favorite um super tough class um i think the best way to approach it or at least in uh what i think is the best way is um i did a lot of flashcards and i use like whiteboards and stuff to memorize the mechanisms um you just have to like practice different ways of like memorizing material um because ochem is not straightforward where you just you know, memorize a term and then match that with the definition. Um, and yeah, so it a lot of the a lot of what comes to memory is just practicing um, repetition and then um, writing out the mechanisms. So just 
using your hand to um, really continue to write the mechanisms, erase it, and then practice again. Um, those are like good ways to uh, help you memorize that material for OCHEM. I'm just gonna add on to that. Um, the being really organized with notes is something I really wish I um, had done. I always take, I, th I like taking paper notes, um, but then um, concepts re pop up in later sections, at least in the 118 series. Um, things I learned in the first quarter, I kind of internalized, but then the second quarter um, became more difficult. And then in the third quarter, I still had to memorize the stuff from the second quarter. And then I got really lucky that some of my friends had taken good notes for the stuff from the previous quarter. But um, yeah, just make sure you um, know where your things are and be able to bring it back because it's not that hard to, it's not that hard to relearn stuff for, um, for more difficult tests because everything builds on each other. It's not that it's not hard to relearn stuff, but um, if you don't, then then you're probably in trouble. So yeah, being organized. Biochem, um, Biz 105 or Biz 102, 103 has been the hardest class for me. But once you learn the skills in chem, uh, that'll kind of carry over to the Biz um, that you can apply to those. Um, so maybe re analyze what went well and what didn't go well for you when studying for your OCHEM, because uh, you'll be you'll be kind of going through some of the same concepts of OCHEM in your biochem class or classes. Um, so be sure to hone in on those good study skills that really helped you in OCHEM and apply those to the biochem class. Cool. Those are really good advice. Um, I, I will add to that and say that there are, um, that EVE 100 is typically a class that students complain about um, being either challenging or time consuming. Um, however, um, I have also seen students say that it's, if you put in the time, you're good. Um, and most of these are upper division courses except for the OCHEM. So if you've done OCHEM and you're a transfer, good job, you've escaped a monster. Um, but yeah, there are some other electives also that students sometimes say were really challenging. Um, but the good news with electives is that you chose to take those. So hopefully you're more interested in them. So even if they're challenging courses, you'll still um, enjoy your time and be able to keep up with it because you enjoy it. All right, um, next question is a little bit related, but how do you balance the major courses, a minor, and taking pre-med requirements? So maybe if you have a major and minor, you can speak to that. And if you are pre-med, you can also speak to that. So I went to GDB one, um, and you want to make sure that you don't have overlapping courses. Like you can't count certain minor classes for certain major classes. So you just want to make sure that you're completing it on both ends. And also I know for like pre-med, pre-health related requirements for GDB, at least a lot of the lower div science classes like um, bio, physics, biochem, those are also part of the pre-med requirements. So actually like completing G the GDB major is completing a lot of um, medical related classes. But I would also like talk to our health professions advising, which is like the advising office that is spe specified for pre-health, pre-med, pre-PA um, major. So you can go and ask them about um, different classes, especially like upper div classes that you might take that are geared towards um, someone who is pre-med or pre-health. Okay, I can go into like how I've balanced it. So I am a public health minor um, and I actually just decided to get it because um, 
I had taken a lot of public health classes, which the course is SPH. Um, and like as my restricted electives, and I realized why not just get a minor in it. Um, but yeah, I'm looking at my past quarters and I would say you should um, focus on like one major science course, like whether that be biology or chemistry or physics, but try not to take like chemistry and biology at the same time, because that could be a lot of work since those classes typically have labs. Um, and treat yourself to taking a class that you want to take at least each quarter, like you need a class to be excited for. And I kind of made an error uh, starting off and I finished a lot of my GE requirements that are, we have major requirements and college requirements. And I took a lot of random classes to satisfy GE classes, uh, GE requirements, not knowing that our restrictive electives could also satisfy those requirements. So yeah, I would say have a good balance of fun classes, um, a major science class and other major required classes, but just maximum like probably five classes per quarter. Thank you all. That was, that was a good segue into the next question. Um, for those who are coming in as freshmen or those who are coming in as transfers but haven't completed their GEs, what are the best GEs that you all have taken here at Davis? Um, I'm a music minor, so I'm just going to really quickly plug the music department. It's really cool. And um, like even just the beginning music courses like Music 10 and Music 11 or like History of Music Literature or something and uh, Musics of the World. Um, so I recommend those. They're very fun. Professors are great. We have a very cool music department, y'all. Um, I can t uh, I took psychology 51, which is relationship sciences. And it was just really, um, it was a much more objective look into all sorts of relationships than I ever thought I'd see. And it really was insightful into how humans think, how they go into relationships and how they behave in them. And it offers a lot of actually surprisingly practically apl applicable advice that you can use both romantic, platonic, familial, anything really. Brandon put in the chat, anything philosophy. Um, Brandon was a philosophy minor, so trust him. He knows what he's talking about. I would say um, don't take MGT courses. I mean, don't take accounting for fun. It's not fun. <laughs> That's my minor. It's um, technology management is my minor. And I took, intro, I took intro to accounting and I'll just say I got, I'm so lucky that the final was remote. I think that, or no, it got canceled, it got canceled. So that was, that was, that was difficult. So now you know what not to take and what to take. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see if there's any more questions in here. Um, Okay. Oh, can I add something to the GE topic really quick? Yeah. If you already have your writing experience completed or you're not looking for specifically a writing heavy class, um, just be sure that the little GE tags on the class exclude WE or else you can expect that that class will be more time consuming than maybe you thought because of the writing assignment. Cool. I have, oh yes, HMR1 is a really good one, Indira. Um, all right. I have a question that's not as academic, um, but hopefully you all can chime in with something. Um, how did you choose what extracurriculars to be part of and how do you balance it? <laughs> Michael's face. <laughs> Uh, 
Anybody? Go for now. Um, so first, I looked literally at every single organization. You don't need to do this, but that was just my process. I went to the involvement fairs and I just combed through Aggie Life with filters. And I kind of looked at a mix of both professional organizations. Like I'm part of the Philippine X Association for Health Careers. So that's kind of like the professional one. There's the GDB one, which is kind of professional, but mostly social. There's so many clubs and sports teams. I investigated those a bit. And then once I had a list of like 10, I kind of went through my full quarter, like, do I want to go to this one anymore? No. Is this one really fun? Yes. Is this one worth my time? Yes. And I just kind of narrowed it down until I had three or four organizations that I consistently liked attending. I, me and Raf are very similar. So I was super gung-ho when I came into college. Like I just signed up for everything. Um, and then it's at one point during my fall quarter, I signed up for 10 different clubs and I went to all the meetings. Uh, I eventually figured out like which ones, I eventually figured out which ones I liked and which ones I didn't like. And I met a lot of people in those clubs too. And um, I think I like the way I deal with um, balancing things is I kind of push my limits a little bit and I try to, I'm, I'm kind of nuts. Um, I try to find out what I can and can't do just by doing it. And then I eventually like, I eventually kind of works out in the end. Um, so yeah. Trial and error, a true scientist. Anyone else? Um, mine are a little bit tied to like what I wanna do after college. Um, I'm kind of, I'm interested in like public health and health inequality. So I'm with a student run clinic that provides care to like marginalized communities um, and does like advocacy work. Um, I'm part of Students for Reproductive Freedom, which is like political, I know, um, but also kind of related to women's health, um, especially. So I kind of tied it into my general public health interest, but then I'm also in Davis Chamber Choir, which is just because I like to sing. <laughs> and I think Bianca was in it too. So yes, yay singing. Um, and then I'm in River, which does health education um, in marginalized communities. So I think it's important to like, think about your academic interests as well as like your self care and like personal interests and kind of try to do something at least like one thing for each. And that's a good way to balance it. Cool. I was hoping you would answer, Andy. <laughs> um, yeah, so comb through your interests. Um, but like Indy said, make sure that you're having like a balance of academic interests or professional interests, but also social interests. Um, I went through three years of community college where I was like, I went from being in high school where I was like super involved in music and like singing every day and all of that. And then I went to community college for three years and I had nothing to do with music and it drove me crazy. So when I came to Davis, I was like, I'm going to make time for this. And it was hard, but I made time for it just because I really needed it in my life. So those kinds of um, extracurriculars are really good for you too, um, as well as the professional ones. And as Raf kind of insinuated, there's tons of things that you can comb through and you can look at all of it on Aggie Life or go to the involvement fair. HV put the link up on the chat. All right, um, a question just came in. Um, have any of you done study abroad? I've never even had a normal quarter here. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> poor Rav. Um, Okay, so maybe you all can't super answer this question. Someone just asked, um, like, do you recommend doing study abroad programs? Yes, I did study. Yes. Oh, oh if go, you did. Go. Um, so I did, I, or sorry, I did physics abroad. So basically you complete the whole physics series. So typically uh, you do physics 7A, B, C, and it, that requires three quarters a whole year. But I shortened it to two months abroad in Ireland over summer. And I highly recommend, it was definitely the hardest 
like when people were asking what was the hardest thing you took at Davis, I didn't take this class at Davis. I took it in Ireland and it was probably one of the hardest classes I've ever taken. Um, but it's very rewarding and you get to complete a whole series. Um, so you save time and they offer you a lot. If you're already getting financial aid, they will offer you a lot of financial aid um, when you do study abroad. Um, and yes, I definitely recommend it. And um, yeah, you, they also do OCHEM abroad. Um, they used to do OCHEM with Dr. Shore, and, but I'm not sure, I think he's retired now, but yeah, the link there is definitely something to look into. And there's so many programs. You can also do Biz 101 abroad in Japan, which is really popular and a lot of people recommend. Um, but I definitely recommend the physics one. It was really hard, but I got to meet really cool people and do a lot of really fun things and explore after every class, which is also what made it hard because you are like balancing, like going to class, but wanting to like go out. Yeah, make one new team. I highly recommend if you can fit it in your schedule. Yeah, um, I will add also that there are non-academic study abroad programs where they're more like internships and classes. Um, and a lot of our students have taken those programs and they can use those units for electives. So it's still used towards their major, even if it's not academic classes. So there's plenty of options. You should check out that link. Um, I, I did not study abroad, but I do recommend it. It's a global major, so why not go somewhere different and learn something different from another culture um, or just learn academics from an Irish professor. Why not? Um, I think I'd like to add, I didn't do like study abroad, but I had experience like signing up for it. And if you want to do it, you have to, it's like first come first serve and it is intense. I wanted to do physics in Hong Kong, but I was waitlisted. I could not get in. So good luck to all of you guys who want to go. Uh, yes, so I remember when I signed up, I went at like, I woke up at like five to like fill out my form and then I went to campus at like 6.30 to wait in line. And there was already like a line of people outside the International Center. So it's really popular um, and definitely like if you come later, um, there's like no guarantee that um, like you'll be you'll be placed on a wait list, but there's no guarantee like you'll get into the program. So yeah, that's a really good tip is to definitely um, be on top of deadlines because this pro like these programs are very popular. So um, that kind of ties in to another question that came in. When is the best time to study abroad? Um, and before any of you guys can answer, I will say that because some of these programs are really competitive, the earlier you plan your study abroad, the more likely you are to actually study abroad because if you don't get in that first time, we can always shift your, your plan so that you can take it the next year. So the earlier you plan for it, the better, um, as long as it makes sense, of course. Um, but other than that, HV, do you have any thoughts on when's the best time to study abroad? I knew I wanted to study abroad because um, I went to one of these like panels when I was a freshman and one of the advice like a senior told me was something that they regretted not doing um, during like the question was like what do you like regret not doing and they said like doing study abroad so I definitely wanted to like somehow fit that in some way or another. Um, so I like went to the um, study abroad um, advising office like my freshman year, um, but I did it before um, going into my third year. Cool. Um more questions. Um, okay, this is the last question I'll ask. And then if there's more questions in the chat, um, we'll do those. Um, and then at the end, 
I will just let you all say whatever you want to. You can shameless plug for anything. You can uh, talk about your favorite part at Davis or anything like that. But before then, uh, my last question is, how do you, oh, there's a follow-up on study abroad. When you apply for study abroad, can you apply for more than one class in the case that you don't get one of the classes? I don't remember that. Um, I think Sorry. <laughs> I think you apply to different programs. Um, so I don't I don't think there's a problem with you doing multiple applications, but I think you do also put a deposit when you apply. So it would be quite a bit of money <laughs> to apply for different programs. Um, at least that's my understanding, but I'm not entirely sure. You should definitely um, check out the website, Rose, and also maybe drop in and talk to their advisors and talk about um, what study abroad looks like and how to get in. Um, when I applied for study abroad, I went into the office and like programs like for physics, it's offered at many different locations. So some locations may be filled up before others. And I wasn't able to go to Hong Kong, but then um, a spot opened up for like a Mediterranean island, but I didn't end up going, which I wish I did. But sometimes they could help you like move you around if it's like the same class. Cool, thank you, Anna. Um, okay, so my last question for you all. How do you make time for self-care and what do you do for self-care when your schedule is crazy with school and extracurriculars? Hannah makes food and posts it on her Insta blog. And I enjoy the food. <laughs> yeah, um, for me, I don't compromise my sleep, but I will spend like an extra 30 minutes in the evening or wake up an extra 30 minutes in the morning to really have, that can be a time that you can do anything. Um, for me, it's reading or like spending time with my fiance or spending time with family. And so to take, like, I don't want to promote like staying up way past your bedtime and like not getting an eight hours worth of sleep, but sometimes that that can actually help you sleep better if you're not like working right up until the point that you go to sleep and then all of a sudden your mind's still racing with all of, like, oh, I have to do this and this and this. Like you can give yourself 30 minutes of uninterrupted, maybe no social media, no phones. You can do whatever, eat, have a bath, take a shower, take a walk, um, go outside, um, or just lay there. <laughs> stretch. Stretch, yeah, work out. Um, so that might be something to, to consider. Um, for me, oh, okay. Uh, for me, what I do um, to just hobbies, is I'm either getting good food or making good food or, and I'm, I'm always working out. So when I was still in Davis, when everything was still in person, every time I finished a midterm week, I'd go to this shop, uh, this restaurant, Thai Canteen and buy myself my favorite food from there. And just relax for like 15, 30 minutes doing nothing. And then consistently I'd be going to the gym. That changes in quarantine also, but the gist is the same. I work out, I get myself tired and then I get good food. And I also keep in mind how much of my time is useful doing one activity. Like if I'm trying to study, like I'm doing my absolute best, but I know I'm not gonna learn anything because I'm super tired, just quit studying. It's not gonna be helpful for you. Just take that time to rest and go back to it later. If you're trying too hard to sleep, but you're absolutely not able to sleep, do something productive with that time or just rest. Make sure all of your time is being spent productively on something. And if it's not, 
maybe shift it to something else until you can return to that activity. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with what Raf just said. Um, if you can like efficiently manage your time, I, which it took me a while to get the hang of, but I really recommend just trying to get like your work done like during the week and then just keeping the weekends for yourself to do whatever you want to do. Because I think it's important to just like take a break, even just for a day. Like if you're not in the studying mood or like if you can't motivate yourself to do homework, it's okay to just not do it that day. Just do something that you enjoy and they'll still feel like productive because you're giving yourself a little break. Cool. Anybody else have any different thoughts? My advice is drink water. That's pretty important. Um, yeah, I think the sleep conversation was pretty important. I am a very anxious person. So whenever I had tests or I had to study or I had something to do, it was really hard for me to go to sleep and be like, I can't focus on this right now. I'll do it later. It was so hard for me to do that. But at the same time, if I stayed up trying to work on it, I wasn't doing anything. I was just like stressing out about it and freaking out. So it wasn't worth it. Um, so I highly recommend doing some like meditation or some sort of like breathing exercises or stretches or something to relax you so that you can actually sleep so that when you wake up, you can actually be more productive doing what you were doing. Um, so being self-aware is really important, trying to manage your time when you're pretty busy, like you, like all of us are as students. So um, I will let the panelists finish off this part um, with just anything you want to share. If there's anything else you want to share, favorite part about UC Davis, favorite part about GDB, um, favorite part about shelter in place, least favorite part about shelter in place. <laughs> anything you all want to share. You guys are going to have a blast with your professors in this department. Each one of them have such a vibrant, passionate form of uh, teaching. And um, I feel like you just, the more that you show up to their office hours and get to know them, I think that'll really enrich your experience as a GDB student because they have so much experience, knowledge, and just passion to share with students. And it's really inspiring to see them and to engage with them. I do love our faculty, they're great. Um, another thing about our professors, I can promise you that just because everything is online, our professors are still giving everything their 100%, if not more. Like, I feel like it's really important to understand that they're like staring at a blank screen with just random names everywhere and your participation will make their day like I have gotten close to so many professors um, because I took spring quarter online and both summer sessions and that's how I got into my independent study and I have a potential um, like practicum mentor when we are back in session in person and they are so sweet like at least the professors I have, they're really accommodating. Definitely try and get close with them, stay in touch with them, talk to them. And who knows, like you may find a good connection. Yeah, that's really good advice. Um, at a big university like this, at least this is how I thought coming from a small community college where classes were like 25 people max. Um, coming here, I was always like, oh, professors aren't even going to remember my name. They don't even know who I am. They don't care. They're too busy with research. But that's just not uh, not true at all. I'm sorry, Henry, that your CC professors are scary. <laughs> um, the truth is, maybe some professors are less approachable or they're less 
social or something like that. But the majority of professors are in this profession because they do like mentorship. Um, like professors that do research, that half of their job is mentoring grad students and postdocs and people through research. So they actually do love getting to know students and what your interests are and helping you through that process. So don't be scared. Um, maybe one or two of them will be scary, but I, nine out of 10 times, they won't be. Is throwing candy? Well, at least you got candy out of it, I, I guess. <laughs> um, all right, y'all. Uh, I hope that this gave you a little bit of a perspective into what GDB life is like. If you have any more questions, um, you can still put them in the chat and we can answer them through the chat. But for now, um, we can take a quick break. We can come back around 3.08, so a quick five minute break, and then we'll go into some games. Um, you've all just been listening to us talk and now we can all mingle together. So go get water, bathroom, food, snacks, um, and we'll meet back here in five minutes.
If you are not back yet, hopefully my voice will prompt you to be back. Um, so, we have two options for this second part <clears throat> today. Um, oh, first I want to point out that I do have some information on the slide on the screen. Um, and I'll leave that up for the next few minutes. Um, if you have more questions, you can always email us. You can also continue putting them in the chat if you want to. The UN Research FIAC, uh, the link is on the chat somewhere, uh, scrolling up. Um, but you can also email us if you can't find that chat or that link. Um, the We will have a practicum open house. So that will be kind of a, a an event where you can come and ask students about their practicums. You can also ask faculty about how they feel about the practicum and what the mentor mentoring process is like for them. Um, so it'll be all things practicum. Um, it'll be on October 15th. That's week two, I believe, I think. Um, and then lastly, we do have wellness nights coming up. We haven't decided on specific dates yet, but be on the lookout. They'll be on our newsletter so and on our Facebook page, so you'll be able to see it. Um, but for this second part of this afternoon, we have two options. One is we can finish Jeopardy from this morning to find a winner. Um, wait, did you finish Jeopardy, Brandon? No? Okay, so we can finish Jeopardy, or we can go into different games. Do we have votes? Did anyone love Jeopardy and really wants to do Jeopardy? <laughs> so no? Um... So I think later on in a few minutes, the entomology students are actually going to join us with Francesca. Um, so they will be able to do um, games with us. Um, there's only a few of entomology students, so it won't add too many students to our group. But for now, we can play 
let's save the take a seat game, Hannah, for when the entomology students join us. Yeah, that's then, good. Um, but for now, we can play same here. Yes, good idea, bad idea. <laughs> yeah. All right. It seems like it. some people in the chat wanted to finish up Jeopardy too. Oh, I did not see the chat. Yeah, people want to finish that up. Okay, let's do Jeopardy then while we wait for entomology. Um, Brandon, do you have it up or on your computer? There are. Yeah, give, me, give me a sec. Okay. What other majors are here? <laughs> Where are you? What majors are you guys from? Somebody said there are other majors hiding here and there. Yeah, I, I saw that I did not recognize some of the names. Showers. <laughs> There's two Henrys. There's an expose. Biotech. Hmm. Henry, are you thinking of switching? The Henry that's not GDB. <laughs> Are you <laughs> intending to switch to GDB? <laughs> Baby. How did how did you end up here is what I'm curious about. <laughs> I mean you're welcome here, but I just just curious how that happened. <laughs> oh, I see. Ah, okay. Cool. Nice to have you guys. The more the merrier. Hey, Bianca, I'm gonna, uh, can I share my screen? Yeah. Um, I think you have to stop sharing yours first. Oh, yes. And Where is Indy it? still here? Okay, cool. She's still here. Uh, I'm here, Brandon. Don't worry. Okay, cool. Does everyone see my screen. Oh my god. Hopefully this doesn't go like back to square one. Let's see. You can click the home button. Oh yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So it seems like we are right where we left off. Um I guess, Indy, do you want to go over the scores first, and then we can jump back in to the game? Okie dokie. So we have the Galactic Dave Biologists at 900 points. We have the Cakewalkers at 1,300 points. We have Mango Pets at 500, and we have Team Spoon Tings at 500 as well. All right. Um, let's see how we should do this. Um, we can choose the, well, it's a tie between, uh, what was it? Spoon tings and mango pets. Is that right? Yes. Um, and so we can, uh, I, I don't know which one we should, let's see. I can just choose, I can just choose, how about I just choose uh, um, a category and a point uh, number, and then we can just go from there to see who raises their hand or uses the raise hand function first. How does that sound? Stop. Sorry, that's my dog. She hears UPS, so she's about to go crazy for like a minute. Um, okay, cool. So I'll just, I'll just go ahead and do that. Um, let's just start easy uh, with diseases for 100 points. And then again, like I'll read off the question. Um, and then as soon as I finish reading, then feel free to raise your hand. And if uh, HV, if you can see who raises their hand again, that'd be great. Okay, a seasonal disease with preventative measures available that must be renewed every year. 
Tifa? What is the flu? What is the flu is correct. And which team were you? I was in the uh, GDB one, the Galactical Days Biology. The Days, the Days, all right. Days with 100 points. And go ahead and choose another uh, category and point. Um, UCD Trivia for 400. UCD Trivia for 400. Before being established as its own university, UC Davis was an agricultural extension of UC Berkeley. Its name was blank. Chancellor May just sent this in an email last week. <laughs> you can cheat. Bianca. Let me. What is the university farm? Correct. Wow. Gary Town. <laughs> okay. Blue one or is it the red one? Give me like five minutes. Apparently, then um, I'll choose resources on campus for four hundred. Resource sync. And which team were you a part of? Sorry. Spoon Tings. Spring things, cool. And how many right. points do I give? Sorry. 400. Got it. And okay, so we'll get, we'll give you resources on campus for 400. A cool spot to study, watch a basketball, sorry, my thing's in the way. A cool spot to study, watch a basketball game, attend a yoga class, and even see your friends Pete and Jim. Ravni. What is the arc? Correct. You even and know acronym. Uh, and that was for 400. Uh, and which team were you? Spoon Tings. Spoon Tings. Cool. Got and go um, ahead and question. Let's do diseases 500. Diseases 500. All right. Let's finish this off. The most common complications of this disease are hemorrhagic or hemorrhaging, fever, muscle pain, and hearing loss. Its main transmission is by rat urine contamination in food and water. Julia? Um, what is leptospirosis? Is that it? Am I wrong? <laughs> What is leptospirosis is incorrect. It is, what is loss of fever? So which team are you? <laughs> From Cakewalkers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh man, okay, so that's Back minus 500. Oh. oh no, it's okay. Uh, okay, um, let's go over, do you wanna read off the points again, Indy? So we can see where everyone's at. Okay, so we have the Galactic Day Biologists at 1,000 points. The Cakewalkers are now at 800 points. The Mango Pets are at 500 points. And Team Spoon Tings is at 1,300 points. All right. And who has the lowest score? Uh, Mango Pets. Okay. We'll, we'll have Mango Pets choose the next category and uh, number of points. Rose, I think you're the only person left from our team. <laughs> oh no, okay. Um, let's do popular culture for 100. All right, popular culture for 100. This Netflix show is for all the cool cats and crazy kittens. You'll find friends like Carol Baskin and Joe Exotic. Julia. What is Tiger King? That is correct. Popular culture for 100. And which team were you? Oh, uh, 
cake walkers. Cake walkers. Okay, so you redeemed yourself. Cake All right, cake walkers. You guys can choose the next category and points. Um, okay, maybe do uh, resources on campus 200. Resources on campus for 200. Public health, nursing, dental school, need help narr narrowing your pre-health track? Come meet with us. Ravni, what is the HPA? Yes, what is HPA or health professions advising? Perfect. That was for 200. And what was your team name? Spoon Tings. Spoon Tings. Coming back. And um, go ahead and pick the next one. Let's do wellness for 100. Wellness for 100. This liquid makes up 70% of your body. Dalton. What is water? Yes, that is correct. Thank God no one said coffee or something. Uh, Dalton, uh, cake walkers, right? Yeah, so yeah. go ahead and choose. Okay, let's go to wellness for 500 because, you know, we already did the 100. Let's finish off the category. Let's do it. Wellness for 500. Let's go. Daily double. Oh, we got lucky. Oh. Yeah, okay, so... Uh, let me explain this just briefly again. So for our daily double, um, you have to wager amount of points. Um, you can either uh, wager all your points or a portion of that. Um, but if you get the question correct, then um, you will get the number of points you wagered. If not, then you lose the number of points you wager. So depending on, and you are part of Cakewalkers, correct? Yeah. All right. So um you can choose you can discuss among the other cake walkers and and see how much you guys want to wager um Andy, can you tell them how much they have the cake walkers yeah the cake walkers have um i just want to confirm that the last turn got y'all another hundred points <sighs> yeah correct, correct okay okay um so y'all are at one thousand points right now one thousand Okay, 1,000 exactly. So you can wager however many you guys want. And that. you guys can go into a breakout room if you want to. Yeah. Oh, the Spoon Kings has um, uh, 1,500. So what's it gonna be? All right. Julia, Henry, what are you, what are you guys thinking? I'm thinking 500, but then we'll just go to zero if we lose. I guess we could. We might not be in last place if we get some more questions. If we, if we do one quarter, we would tie them if we win. <laughs> and if we lose just a quarter, then we will just lose. Oh, wait, do we double down also if we if we failed it? Basically, yeah, so you can lose the amount that you wager, basically. Oh, just just what we wagered, or that double? Just what you wager. Just what oh, you wager. So even if we go a quarter, we would tie them. Or you, you could go all in, 500, 600. He doesn't even go here anyways. I mean, um, I do like <laughs> 500, 600 range. All right, yeah, you want to spice it up? Thinking? Let's go. If we win that, then we pretty much win. So let's work together. Yeah, might as well. I mean, there's no point in going below. <laughs> do we answer this one as a team? Or how, how does it work? Yeah, do we get this uninterrupted? Yeah. Uh, wagering, right? Or yeah, like, we, if you want to be cool, just say true daily double, you know? <laughs> nah, I mean, we it's the daily double. It should only be us. It's all in, right? Oh, what do you guys like, No one else can, should be. All right, let's go for it. Let's go. Why not? This is like Yu-Gi-Oh! When you summon an Egyptian god card, no card <laughs> play. Okay, so you guys want to do uh, all the points correct? So a 1,000? Uh-oh. Fuck it. All in, all right. let's go. Okay, okay, all in. Um, Hannah, do you want to put them in a, a breakout room after? <laughs> oh no, we're gonna be disciplined. Uh, I, I yeah. can do it. Um, oh, whoever is. 
Just tell me who is who. Uh, it's just Henry, Dalton, and Julia, correct? That's right. all we need. That's all we need. Which Henry? The real Henry. The better Henry. The real. <laughs> Can I put the imposter Henry in there too? <laughs> and Maisie's in our group too. Oh, and Maisie, Henry. correct. Okay, cool. Okay. And the great Brendan. I will go ahead and show you the question. And then after that, um, we'll put you in a breakout room for like 15, 20 seconds, and then we'll bring you back. Uh-oh, all right. So here is the question. The strongest muscle in the human body. Hmm. We will now go to your breakout room. Did they successfully go? I think they did. I let me check. Yeah, I think, I think so. they're not good. Yeah. Strongest muscle in the human. No, body. nobody's watching them. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they could totally cheat. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, wait! Someone go in there. Brandon, do you want to go in there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't mean. Hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> Get them. <laughs> Brandon, disqualify them. <laughs> <laughs> this is intense, y'all. How much time do we give them? That's enough. They're probably... What we should have done is not given them enough time to look anything up. <laughs> that, yes. Oh, like 10 time. seconds in the breakout room. Yeah. Yeah, this was a really easy question to look up. Anybody have any answer before they come by? The masseter. Oh, is that right? I'm on Google right now, and the answers are kind of confusing. Like, there's a lot of different muscles that they're listing. Your tongue was, like, strongest, like, ratio size to strength or something. I don't know. That's a good question. What is what does strongest mean? Is like total output? What is the definition of strength, y'all? Mm -hmm. Are there any holes in these things? Question: Was I like unmuted when I like picked up a call earlier? No. Okay. Yes, we heard everything. <laughs> I was the boba from outside, <laughs> but I got my like uh, I got my. Uh, What's up, y'all? Hey, y'all. Hello. I summoned Dalton to the field. We end up thinking it was the jaw. Um, the the masseter, dude. The jaw. Yeah. The masseter muscle Ooh. in the jaw because that's like able to you know crush stuff pretty easily. Master. How do we know you didn't cheat? Well, we, we know, know the, the jaws have the, the most mandible. pressure on the body, so the muscles have to contract, we'll them, which has an incisor. So, come on, you guys, bio majors, we're all bio majors. Yeah, I took physio. I know that's why. Get some. Oh, look at our haters! Look at the haters! Look at them. Let's see what is the answer. Brandon, are you here? Is Brandon back? <laughs> Why do we keep leaving Brandon? Wait, hello? Oh my god, we have him hostage. Oh, oh. hi, Brandon. There he is. Oh, I, I was muted this whole time. I thought I was like, not muted. <laughs> we thought you got kicked out of the Zoom meeting or something. No, no, no. I, I, guess, I guess it just muted me, but okay. Wait, can you say your answer again in Jeopardy fashion? Okay, what is jaw muscle known as the masseter? Okay, that is correct. So you guys just got a thousand points. <laughs> Wait, wow. So you guys are now up to two thousand, correct, um, Indy? Yes, that's correct. Sweet. All right, and you guys have the opportunity to pick again for Woo. that category. Uh, I mean, let's play it safe, you guys. Let's do a hundred. Yeah, let's just do GDB courses a hundred. 
Kiwi if Corsica. you win it, they pretty much can win. He's the chair of our department, the founder of the GDB program, and instructs GDB 90. Oh, we just saw him too. Oh, dang. Uh... Okay, who raised their hand first? That's me. Who is Laveau? Who is Laveau is incorrect. It is who is Dr. David Rizzo, the face of GDB. So which team were you on? Spoon Tings. Spoon Tings. OK, minus 100 to Spoon Tings. Yep. And yeah, who I mean, has the lowest score count right now? The lowest is Mango Pets at 500. OK, Mango Pets, take a stab at it. Pick a category and point. Rose, it's all you. You're carrying our team here. <laughs> I think it's just me, like a one woman team now. But um, let's do UC Davis trivia for 500. Oh, yeah. Here we go. UC Davis has a science center located at this popular California recreation area. Did anyone raise their hand? I can't tell. Anna said, can we let Rose call for a lifeline? I have no one to call. <laughs> <laughs> call on Hannah. No, but Hannah knows the answer, never mind. Yeah, it's not fair. GDB oh, Club GDB is here. here. The whole GDB club is behind you, Rose. Take a guess, anybody. Shoot, can I guess? Would you like uh, to join Rose's team then? I think I would. <laughs> okay. Take a uh, guess. It's probably gonna be wrong. Is it Lake Berryessa? Yeah. So what is it? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is Lake Tahoe? I was guessing like Bodega Bay or something, but that was completely off too. Um, okay, well. Mango pets. I'm mango sorry. Pets down to zero. Man, it's okay. Uh, you guys can choose, since you guys are the lowest scoring again, you guys can choose the next category. You have two to choose from. Okay, well. Whoa. Um, I guess resources on campus for 500. <laughs> okay. Resources <laughs> on campus for 500. <laughs> and remember, anyone can uh, raise their hand on this to answer. So um, yeah, win or lose honorably. Let's go, 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 go. Looking for a computer lab, some coffee, and community? This place has it all. AB 540 Undergraduate Research Center, the LGBTQIA Plus Center, and Bridge all live here. Ravni, what is the Memorial Union? Incorrect. What is the Student Community Center? Close though, very close. They, they both house um, a lot of student resources. And which team are you? Spoon teams, right? Yeah. Okay. Subtract 500. Subtract 500. Right. And here is our last one. Resources on campus for 100. This place houses all things from tacos to bowling alleys to open I study spaces. Ooh. I want I want 100 points. What is the MU? Correct. Oh man, I was wrong. I was at the ARC, but yeah. Oh, good close, close. Very close yeah. answers. All right. I think that, yeah, that's that's it for the game board. Um, let's see our point totals, Indy. Yeah, so we've got the Galactic Day Biologists at um, 1,000. We have the Cakewalkers at 2,000. 
we have Mango Pets at 100, and then we have Team Spoon Tings um, down to 900. Man, all right. Congrats to the Cakewalkers with a whopping 2,000 points for orientation jeopardy. Let's give them a round of applause. Sorry, Rose, Mango Pet. Yeah, Mango Pet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, and I am going to turn it back over to Bianca. Thanks, Brandon. That was fun. Um, so, our next game. I don't know if entomology students are going to join us, actually. They seem to be having fun all on their own. Um, so... <laughs> Henry... This Henry knows a lot about diseases. Are you sure you don't want to be a GDB major? You're welcome to come into our major, you know? Um, all right, so our next game is called Take a Seat, but we're not going to do that version of it. We're just going to make it like a Never Have I Ever game. Um, Give me Hannah, one second, wanna... everybody. Ooh, okay. Hey, um, Bianca, can we join you guys? Yeah, we're just going to start the different game. Perfect timing. Okay, let me let me tell everybody. Yeah. We ended perfectly. perfectly. Alright, hang tight everybody. GDB is like interconnected, you know. Like, once you join the fam, it's you inherit. So we're a hive mind is what you're getting at. No. <laughs> So I think all of our entomology students are here. I see Alan, Amy, I see Justin, Kyle, Laura, Saya, Sierra. I think I got everyone. That sounds about right. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for hanging in there. Um, just wanted to introduce our G 
GDB Club and, sorry, I don't know why I keep saying GDB Club, GDB Advising and then also our Entomology Advising and kind of bring together our orientations. Um, and so I appreciate the warm welcome. We're going to go ahead and do our final activity. Um, I think if I last heard, Hannah was about to describe, uh, is it take a seat or are we doing the? We're going to do fingers. We're going to do fingers. All right. Let's go ahead. Um, Bianca, if you could uh, stop sharing your screen. Cool. And then Hannah, I'll pass it over to you. Alrighty, y'all. So this isn't necessarily like never have I never, but we're just going to play like put your finger down if you've done this. And then whoever has, is it whoever has the least amount of fingers wins or whoever has the most amount of fingers, most amount of fingers wins? I think last man standing or last person standing. So whoever um, has yeah. the most fingers, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So hands up. This is going to be quarantine edition. So I'm going to say like something kind of quarantine related. And if you've done it, put a finger down. If you haven't, leave it up. Awesome. All right. I'll play too. And I see that folks are turning on their cameras. Thank you, everyone. It's good to see you all. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, you guys ready? All right. Oh, if I have, if, if I have done it, I lower the wind, the, the finger. Yep. yep. If you did it, you put it down. So we're gonna see. We're gonna see how many people have been busy this quarantine, and other people that have been more relaxed. All right. Put a finger down if you've baked sweets or bread. Definitely. Put a finger down if you've had a Zoom call with family or friends, not school or work related. Oh, Henry, going strong with 10 fingers up. Wait, what? Brandon, going strong with the 10 fingers up. Oh. <laughs> Put a finger down if you've used a food delivery service. Can't afford it. <laughs> it is pricey. <laughs> it's like 15 bucks for like something you can get for four bucks. Heck no. I'm with you, Henry. And it's cold. <laughs> Put a finger down if you have tried a new hobby. Nice. Sure. Yell out a hobby that they've tried. Volleyball. Catching. <laughs> Biking. I finally learned how to ride a bike. Biking. I saw, I heard volleyball. Cool. I've been crocheting. Cross stitching. Who was it? Is it Kyle that was cross stitching in our group? Cool, so Maisie was cross-stitching too. Awesome, go ahead, Hannah. All right, put a finger down if you've watched Tiger King. Any favorite characters? Do we have to put each finger down if we've watched it multiple times? <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you watched it, Sierra? At least twice. Love it, I love it. You can just put one down. All right, put a finger down if you've given someone an air hug. Oh. No. Dude, my finger is cramping. <laughs> put a finger down if you've tried a new recipe. No. What recipe did you try, HB? I actually made some matcha mochi donuts with my mom this past week. They didn't go that well, but it was really fun. I think mochi's like really finicky to work with. So. What about you, Francesca? Wait, that I just want to say that sounds so complex. Matcha mochi donut. Yeah, it. There's like a lot of steps, and it has to be like right condition because it's like mochi requires like a lot what about yeah. you um my great aunt posted a recipe of the best banana bread ever so my sister and i made that not too not too crazy cool in the chat i i said it to you all probably in an email i i will have to look for it anyway sorry go for it hannah all right um put a finger down if you have made whipped coffee you have what if you've made whipped coffee, you know, if you're not familiar with it, I guess it was popular on like TikTok and YouTube. Um, 
if you don't know what it is, just keep a finger up. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see who has the most fingers so far. So I see Brandon is standing strong with nine fingers. I uh, see no, 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 six. No, there's another yeah, Brandon. Other Brandon oh, oh, me. Yeah. oh, wow. Nine? Henry. We got Henry. We got I'm boring. Henry. Yeah. Team introverts. I'm hella boring. Dave. Oh my gosh, Saya hasn't done any of this stuff yet. Wait, this is your time to shine as an introvert. You guys get to win something. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. All right, keep going. All right. Um, put a finger down if you have given yourself a haircut. Oh, hell no. <laughs> no. Did you just did? Quarantine bangs. <laughs> Bianca's bangs. All right, put a finger down if you've had a fun trip or event canceled. Um, <laughs> my wedding. There's been a full summer time. Oh. Oh. Who's going to get married? Bianca. Bianca. Ooh, I'm sorry. I still, got, I still got married, but it we just didn't have like a reception. Oh, I'm Aww. sorry. Wait, Hannah, was it um, changed or canceled? Um, canceled. Oh, canceled. Okay. Oh. Well, changed. Yeah, I guess postponed or something. Because I want to say Brandon and Bianca's graduation also got, or I guess it was different than what we thought it would be. Mm -hmm. okay. That was not a graduation. <laughs> <laughs> I demand a real graduation. <laughs> All right. I'm so curious if anybody has done this. Put a finger down if you've gone on like a virtual first date. <gasps> virtual first aid? <laughs> date. <laughs> like like a Tinder date or something. I don't know. Yo, no, that exists? See, the other Henry would be into that, not me. <laughs> <laughs> and did anyone put it down? I don't want to call you out. I'm just curious how it went. No. No, I don't think anyone did. All right. All uh, right. Well, Raf is at one, or Raf is at one, HV is at one, H Anna's at two. All right, keep going. Put a finger down if you have registered to vote. Ooh, good one. Does that mean like if you're already registered or if you registered this no, year? No, if you're already registered. Okay. I won't do it, I swear. I just haven't done it. <laughs> good job, Rose. I need to do it. Oh, thanks for calling me out, you guys. The time is now, folks. Register to vote. <laughs> yeah. All right. Put a finger down if you have learned a TikTok dance. Whoa. I, you know, I don't even have an account of those. Heck no. And then yeah, you can't, your can't learn it if you don't have one. If you put your finger down, go ahead and demonstrate the dance. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what if we don't know how the dance? We just, like, followed along. Oh, good. Okay, that's good, Afifa. It's a fun TikTok is fun. I just watched my sister do it. Oh, Anna learned say so. Ooh. Anna, are you ready? <laughs> bring it, bring it. I actually made a TikTok video, but it was my cat dancing. I made her dance, not me. Oh, oh cute. So cute. Well, is your cat ready? I'll no. bring her in later. <laughs> my cat would scratch me if I did that. Sounds good. Is anyone out? HB, are you out? Um, You've been very busy this quarantine. I'm out too. I am out as well. Oh, all right. Folks are out. Um, oh, Henry's out? No, false Henry's out, of course. Oh, spoons. The spoons are back. Oh, kitty. Oh, gosh. Wait, who are the spoons? I'm going to see the participants. I have nine still. Henry, Henry Nguyen has spoons up. Uh. Awesome. All right, Hannah, go for it. All right. Oh, oh it's pet galore. Look at all these dogs. All right. I love the kids, too. Um, <laughs> you have... Raph, he's got his oh, son as well. <laughs> if you started a Started a work. Wait, say it again. A cold? Put a finger down if you started a garden, no matter how big or small. I like have a little, little apartment. Nope. Like a even like a little basil plant or like I don't know a succulent. We already had one like 
we maintained no, only it? If, only if you started it because of quarantine. Like maybe you got a little scared about food security. Okay. Um, put a finger down if you have rearranged furniture in your room or your house, not including like moving to Davis, I guess. Oh, okay. Got bored and wanted to change things up. Who is now an interior designer? Raise that your hand. effort, so no. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm not even kidding. I have a desk coming from Ikea and a new bed coming from Ikea because I just cannot stay in my room. And I've like redone the whole thing. So yeah. I'm probably only going to live here for like a few more months, <laughs> but yeah. Boosting productivity. Put a finger down if you have tried an at-home workout via like an app or a YouTube video. Wait, what, what, what was it? I'm sorry. If you've tried an at-home workout, like a video workout. No, I've showed it to my little sisters. I haven't done it. Explain imagine that. exercising during quarantine. <laughs> yeah, just imagine. Wow. Um, dang, a lot of people down to one right now, I see. Yeah, so I see it's me. I see it's a FIFA, Sierra. Oh, Kyle's out. Kyle's out. Yeah. Saya, you still have 10? Who? Say Adam. Dang. I think he's going to win. <laughs> I have nine. I'm pretty. Dalton's down to one. Brandon's at one. All right. How many more do you have, Hannah? A couple more. Let me try to get some. Some. Let me try to get some. Knock them out. Yeah. Yeah. Knock them out. Put a finger down if you've either watched two movies in one day or you finished a Netflix series in one day. Two days, not one day. I can't do that. Almost. You guys. You guys almost got me. Almost. Stranger Things season three, almost. We almost got it. Uh, Dalton, you and I are out. Darn. All right. Put a finger down. If you made a completely unnecessary online purchase. <laughs> that's the story of my life right there, yeah. Oh, no, that's me this past week. <laughs> what did you buy? A whole bunch of random stuff. <laughs> All right. Put a finger down if you have posted a mask selfie. Who would like that? I mean, I mean, for me, like if I posted, no one would like it. So no. <laughs> Unless you've got like a really sick mask. What's your Instagram handle? Whoa, who made that joke? Wait, what? Someone was like, "Unless you have a really sick mask." What? Oh, I said that. Why? <laughs> that was a good one, Alan. Wait, who has the, I wonder who has the coolest mask here. Hey, I gotta. Oh, oh someone's got oh. the sickest mask. Ooh. Oh my Anthropology God. students, I should have done grab your mask. That would have been a good one. All right, Saya has a. What? What was that? Wait, Alan has. Oh, a... entomology one. Nice. That's cute. Alan has a. Is that? Yeah, I... too, it's a wasp. Oh, it's a wasp. Oh, oh that's pretty cool. I that designed it cool, myself. Yeah. Ooh, Justin has, is that an embroidered one? Cool. Oh. It's an old Crown Royal bag. Oh, nice. I Brandon see, I, I see that black pink. I see I that. that black pink too. Uh, nice. I love the bug ones. You guys are so cool. Cool, Hannah, go for it. Never have I ever, or put a, put a finger down if you, um realized um a pair of your jeans didn't fit anymore <laughs> i definitely put my finger down so. whoa i got the belly but i can squeeze it in so it still fits yeah. nice henry i looked up hacks on pinterest for how to make jeans stretch <laughs> yo you can do that you can stretch your you put a hair tie through the buckle or the button on it, and then you thread it through the, the hole, and then it like extends your 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 jeans. Hannah is not just a peer advisor in our office; she's also a hack queen. I could see that the cook and the hack queen. Yes. Gosh, if we follow had her on Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> All 
if we had in-person meetings, I would totally invite everybody. To, like, I'd bring in some like food for everybody: breakfast, lunch, dinner. We need the meal plan. <laughs> yeah, no meal plan. Um, put a finger down if you ordered groceries for pickup or delivery. I've never done that. All right, I think I'm down to like, um, put a finger down if you cleaned a random place in your house or organized a random place. I only have the living room, the kitchen, and the bed. So no, there's no, yeah. I had to tackle my uh, Tupperware cabinet because I just shove them in there and wait for the next person to come by. Uh, uh, I need to clean the wine cellar. Uh, no, I don't have that, so. Right, um, put your finger down if you had a socially distance hangout, like you actually socially distant, distance yourself. Oh, EJ's out. All right, who do we have? Yeah, who do we have left? So I see Michael with one, Henry has seven, Justin has one, Brandon, no, has five, Saya, ten. Laura, four. Did I get everyone? I think I got everyone. All right, let's do our last one, Hannah, and then this is the end of our advising, or our orientation. All right. Put your finger down if you have, instead of shaking someone's hands, you bump their elbow. Uh, that's me. Uh, this is out. <laughs> All right. Good job, everybody. Saya, we got him on the last one. We got him to nine. <laughs> nice. Am I number two at least? You're two, Henry. Woo -woo. Of all things, the elbow touch. Of all things. All right. Well, awesome, everybody. Thank you again. Thank you so much for joining us for, via Zoom. I know it's been a long week of Zoom calls, and you're about to start um, another quarter of Zoom calls. And so... Yeah, we all just had so much fun. Thank you to both the entomology students and our GDB students. We're excited to see you for the rest of the quarter and the rest of your time here. I hope this was a good welcome um, to our department and to what to expect for fall quarter. If you ever need anything, feel free to email us. GDB, or Bianca has the GDB stuff on here for our, my entomology students. Go ahead and email and advise if you need anything. I think everybody has my email as well. Um, and we're just excited for this school year. So thank you again for joining. Enjoy the rest of orientation. And good luck tomorrow. Oh, Anna through the chat, GDB Club may have an Among Us game night. I might be there. I love Among Us. Awesome. Thank you awesome. all. Awesome. OK. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. <laughs>